Welcome to B Plus Overland, where we share with you all of the upgrades and changes we've made to our B Plus RV for full-time off-grid living and a trip down the Pan American Highway from Alaska to Argentina. Ours is a 2021 LTV Wonder Rear Twin Bed. That's the B Plus in the back, and it's built upon a 2020 Ford Transit 350 HD cutaway van with rear dually wheels. Come check it out. So I'm going to share with you how we decided upon folding mountain e-bikes for our secondary transportation needs when overlanding. Um, how we chose them, how we use them, how we maintain them, uh, how we charge them, and how we store them. So when we started looking at our uh, options when it came to secondary transportation, uh, they it basically boiled down to three things. A motorcycle, uh, some sort of a mountain bike, uh, or uh, some type of an e-bike. And um, what, what did we want to use these for? Where do they fit into our lifestyle? Well, when we're on the road um, and, and we find a nice place uh, like we're in now, um, we like to unpack, we like to get comfortable, get the chairs, the tables out, unpack stuff inside and, and stay for a while. And that could be two, three, four nights or it could be two or three weeks. And we don't want to move the rig. We've got it leveled. We've probably had to maneuver it into where we're, we're staying. And we certainly don't want to lose this beautiful spot. And, uh, but we've got a number of things we'd like to do. We've, uh, we've done some hiking, but we want to explore beyond our normal hiking radius. So that could be 10, 20, 30 or more miles from here. Um, that could include uh, in some areas, uh, and when you're near the cities, it could be include bike paths. Uh, when you're out in the country like this, it's uh, dirt roads and fire roads and, and main roads. Um, we also need the ability to restock. We want to be able to get to local town and get to a grocery store or a tienda and, uh, and get some groceries. And uh, also we might want to go out for dinner or lunch somewhere or just explore a town. Um, so when we started taking those three categories um, of transportation, um, a motorcycle was the first one that came to me. Um, it, it checks a lot of boxes, um, but uh, there are places that you can take uh, regular bikes or e-bikes that motorcycles aren't allowed. Um, we can only carry one, and that means there's a driver and a passenger, um, which that's a different uh, kind of situation. Uh, we couldn't separate and do uh, different things. Uh, and the world's going uh, by a lot faster on a motorcycle. You don't take your time and they're a little noisy. So that kind of fell to the side pretty quickly. Um, mountain bikes, um, that seemed like a good choice. Uh, but there are times that you don't want to be that physical. Maybe you're going to go to dinner in town and you don't want to get there all hot and sweaty. Or you've got to carry more groceries than you're comfortable with um, up a steep hill on a mountain bike. So then we started looking at e-bikes. And that's where the magic place was for us, is uh, finding a powerful e-bike with lots of cargo uh, capacity and something uh, that we could fold down uh, and carry with us easily. And that's what we went with. So this is what we ended up with uh, from Ride Scoozy. This is called the Vigo. Uh, we're not associated with them. This just happened to be the one uh, bike on the market that fit our needs. Um, so I talked about the big, large tires, uh, which this has. We carry an extra tire and inner tube uh, in the rig, just in case. I've got front shocks. I've got lights front and back. Um, I'm going to show you how this uh, breaks down and folds. Uh, but basically, this collapses, this collapses, it folds in the middle, and these fold. And it gets to be a very small package. Um, it is a 7-speed and it is finger operated here. Um, I've got the throttle here. When we're on rough uh, terrain, we tend to turn the computer off and we decide how much juice to give it. Um, we've got uh, brakes front and back. Um, we added uh, these phone holders so we can use off-road navigation on our phone if we need to. We added the uh, rear view, uh, view mirrors. Um, has the removable battery pack that just slides out right here and um, this is nice uh, they've got this big bar to protect the derailleur on there got this big area here that we can 
Um, I did run, we did run out of gas on the all can going to Alaska and I ended up strapping on a gas can here and getting this out while we were on the side of the road and went 10 or so miles and got us some gas. So that was nice to have. And then on each bike we have these uh, panniers, they're removable bags. They also collapse. Um, but you can take them off, and I'll show you on this other one. So yesterday, so right now we're in uh, Colombia, up in the beginning of the Andes Mountains, and uh, we're in a nice um, overlander campground, but we had to go to a town way over on that mountain ridge. So we were able to load both of our bikes up, get our pandiers, and go to the, uh, the vegetable shop and the grocery shop, and fill our bags up um, and then hook them to our to our bikes and bring stuff back but this really makes it easy because you can walk around town with these if you choose and then when you get back to your bike and they're all full you can just hang them on either side another nice feature is uh the fact that the lithium batteries are rechargeable and for us we can just pop them out of the bike here and we can run them over here to our rig I can just simply turn the inverter on on our rig, plug this in and let it set for a couple hours. And because we've got 500 watts of uh, solar on top, we're, uh, we're not plugging into the grid. We're, we're powering our bikes with sun power. So how do we get those bikes in there along with everything else? Well, uh, I'm going to show you. Um, we really love this about our uh, Wonder, our LTV Wonder rear twin bed. Uh, we call it the garage, and it is huge. Um, when, we, when we received it, this box uh, was much smaller, but we've had uh, lithium batteries installed, so the box got a lot bigger and took that space up. Um, here was a slide out uh, for like road bikes or traditional uh, maybe mountain bikes and uh, you could slide it in and out and it made taking your bikes uh, in and out easier but it used up a lot of the space in here so we removed that and once we have folded the two bikes up they basically slide in one and two and they come about this high and I didn't want to lose this storage space so i built this shelf and up here we keep lots of extra stuff so uh, bike helmets dive gear on the other side um, we've got um, our blackstone grill yoga mats hiking poles umbrella um, what is that uh, let's see extra rug uh, spear gun uh, fishing rods collapsed fishing rods tons of stuff up there so not lost space um, so what goes in there in addition to the bikes? Well, um, all of our accessories, <laughs> whether it's a machete, an axe, uh, we've got moving blankets, which we use when we're working under the rig or uh, put our yoga blankets on it, uh, soft coolers with different stuff, um, all kinds of uh, bags and, and hose uh, adapters that we keep in there. And that doesn't stop there on the other side Again, this is all fitting in the garage. We've got our full-size uh, three-phase water filter, 100-foot uh, hose, 30-amp hose, 15-amp hose, our moon shade when we're in a uh, high wind and we can't use our factory one. We've got a uh, big uh, beach shade. And then this is all of our uh, lubricants and extra parts and our hose and a set of extra brake pads for when we need them. And then here you can see some of the space we've lost uh, from the installation of the lithium batteries and um, our inverter here. Um, but here you can see a dive gear and um, some more utility uh, hang space. So it's an incredible feat of engineering as far as I'm concerned that they can get a full-size bike to break down into this compact unit. So one down, I'm going to show you how I did it on the second bike. So I've taken the battery out. Uh, which is right back here. Um, the seat flips forward, you unlock it, and you can take it out. They're over there charging. So first thing is, actually, take the kickstand off. And I'm going to lower the seat. Next, the, uh, the pedals here, I just push it in, they're spring-loaded, 
and I rotate it 90 degrees so that makes them less wide. So that was a big consideration considering how thin it is in there um, and um, was kind of made the difference between getting this brand and the other one was this was an inch um, less in width. The other one wouldn't quite fit. So uh, it made the decision making process a little easier at the end. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to begin to fold this in half. I'm going to put the pedal forward. I'm going to unlock the hasp here. And I'm going to unlock it. Now it's in the open position and I'm going to lock it in the open position. And now I'm just going to fold the bike in half. Boom. Now this is where the bungees come in. It takes a lot of frustration out of the process of loading and unloading if you bungee the pieces together. So I've got this folded. I've got it bungeed in a moment. So now nothing's going to move here or come apart when I'm lifting it up. The next thing I have to do is collapse this. So it's a two-part operation. Number one, I unlock it and then I push down and this drops. Then when this drops, I can open the clamp here and just simply slide the handlebars out and relock that. And then I found that this fits right into this slot really nicely. Rear view mirror out of the way, nice and flush. And again, let's take any frustrating movement out of the process. And now I've got two broken down bikes and they're ready to load in. Okay. All right, now's the loading part. This is, you know, it's a little bit of lifting, but it's not bad, uh, especially with the batteries out. That helps a little. So I'm going to go in the hinge side first, tires facing out. shelf I installed, maybe an inch, max two. But what I can do is I can pick the front end up and just rotate the tire and it just kind of slowly rotate, rolls in. And I get the hinge in the far corner. And then I push the wheels this way. And then the guard for the rear derailleur is protecting the bike on that side. So, nice and snug. Nothing's going to move around, no need for strapping that in, it's just not going to move. So tires are facing out, on this one, tires are going to face in. Same thing. Gently roll it in, if your hiking poles aren't getting in the way. There we go. the pedals down and I'm pushing rubber against rubber pushing it over and that's it and I can just close this and lock it and nothing's touching nothing's moving no need for straps and then once I pack all the other contents that I've already shown you in play uh, in here uh, including our chairs it's just one big kind of padded uh, cargo. Okay, well I finished uh, packing the bikes and everything else that goes uh, in here that I showed you earlier and remarkably, it fits. And then on the other side, same thing. Spares, cords, moonshade, uh, beach shade, everything fits in here. And we're ready to hit the road. So we're now uh, a year and a half plus uh, in on owning the bikes and using them on the road um, across uh, the US, up to Alaska, down the Pacific coast, uh, Baja through Central America. Uh, we're now in South America in, uh, in Colombia, up in the Andes Mountains. Um, we have used them in so many different terrains, um, up mountain fire roads and down them with uh, um, confidence in the brakes. Uh, we've been able to go way beyond what we would hike 
um, and, and we've been able to do it comfortably. We've had the utility of being able to go shopping or go out to dinner and not arrive as a sweaty mess because uh, the ride was so hot. Um, so yeah, we're, we're really happy with them. They provided all the utility that we thought we needed and some that we didn't know we needed. So yeah, we're really happy with them.